Hi guys, it's me, um, and I hope you, everyone is doing okay. So um, today we've got bell work, and we also have our um, interactive notebook that we're finishing up. Um, and then you will turn in your interactive notebook. Um, when you turn in your interactive notebook, make sure that you add your name to the title. Um, and you can do that by um, doing that one of two ways. You can do it when it when you're in your drive in your Spanish folder, or you can do that from right here. Um, so yours will say copy. Um, so you can just add it to the front. So you can add it just like right here, like send your advance. You can add it right here, or you can add it to the end. Either way, um, your choice. So that way I just know who I'm getting it from. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and do my read aloud for you guys. Um, so starting on page 12 or slide deck 12. So, um, we're on article two, Day of the Dead Altars. So it says, Day of the Dead Altars are built during Dia de los Muertos to honor the lives of those who have passed. They are often quite beautiful creations constructed with love and care. Traditionally, every family in Mexico builds an altar on the days leading up to November 1st. Some people even start weeks in advance and hire professionals to build elaborate altars. Can you imagine hiring somebody to like come into your house and build your altar? And that's so crazy to think of. I mean, but you do what you do. On top of the altar, ofrendas, offerings, are laid out for the dead known as ofrenda in Spanish. These items that these are items that uh, spirits will enjoy when they come back to Earth to visit their living families and friends. People make an effort to lay out the best ofrenda they can afford, consisting of the dead consisting of things that the dead person enjoyed while he, she or he was alive. They don't want their loved ones to show up after a long, tedious journey from the other side, Miklan, okay, to be greeted by a meager, half-hearted altar. Okay, so this is really important for people um, to show. It's like saying, hey, <clears throat> you're still in our thoughts. Um, you're still here with us. We remember you. We love you. We care about you. A Day of the Dead altar is usually arranged on a tabletop that is used exclusively for the altar. So it's not like we use it for one thing and then we use it for the ofrenda and then it's back to the other thing. Um, this is just the ofrenda table all year long, um, built on a tabletop that is um, used exclusively for the altar or it is built from stacks of crates. So that way it could have like multiple tiers. Um, altars have at least two tiers, sometimes more. The table or crates are draped with cloth or sometimes a paper or plastic covering and marigolds are often placed around the altar. Okay, so make sure you have your question, your interesting fact, and your um, unfamiliar word slash vocab. Okay. All right. Whether simple or sophisticated, Day of the Dead altars and ofrenda are, all contain certain basic elements in common. Here are the ofrendas that you will typically see on a Day of the Dead altar. Okay, so um, this will be important for remembering um, when you are um, creating your ofrenda or creating your altars, these this is the ofrenda that goes on your altars, okay? Uh, candles, candles are lit to welcome the spirits back to their altars. Marigolds, um, and sometimes we kind of change like mums we we see mums here in the United States, but um, marigolds are used. And mums and marigolds are different things, okay? Different flowers. Uh, well, they're also called chrysanthemums. Um, you see them a lot planted this time of year. Very popular. Um, so these yellow-orange flowers, also called simpasuchil, um, symbolize death. Their strong fragrance also... also um, help lead the dead back to their altars. Marigold petals may also be sprinkled on the floor 
in front of the altar or even sprinkled along a path from the altar to the front door so the spirit may find her way inside. So be like, oh, hey, here's your your little path. Um, incense, most common, um, copal incense, which is the dried aromatic resin from a tree native to um, Mexico. The scent is also said to guide the spirits back to their altars. Okay. Um, salt represents the continuance of life. Um, salt is commonly used to um, help keep things um, preserved. Okay. A photo of the deceased, a framed photo of the dead person to whom the altar is dedicated, usually positioned in a prime spot on the altar. That's probably like the most um, intuitive thing that you would think to find on an altar. Um, so make sure you have your question, your interesting fact, and your new, your unfamiliar words and new vocab on this page. We'll move on to our next page. There's a lot of stuff going on on these altars. Um, we're going to have Pan de Muerto. Um, and we call this bread of the dead. Um, it's Pan de Muerto is known as the uh, symbol of the, of the departed. Um, and it's shaped in a very particular shape. And we're also going to have sugar skulls. Um, so a symbol of death and afterlife. Um, sugar skulls are not only given as gifts um, during Day of the Dead, but they are also placed as offerings on the altar. Um, they're going to do fresh fruit, whatever's in season, bananas, oranges. Um, you're going to do any other kinds of food. Um atole, mole, tamales, tortillas. Um, so whatever the person who is deceased liked to eat, um, you're going to put their favorite food. So it says um, altars usually include the dead person's favorite foods, including modern foods like Rice Krispies or potato chips. Um, so... If it's just like a young person who's passed away, you may find like their favorite um, sodas, things like that. Um, water, that's a big one. Um, souls are thirsty after their long journey from the other side, so they appreciate a glass of water um, upon arrival. And it says here that the favorite drink of the deceased is also laid on the altar. Um, this is kind of a funny one. Uh, toiletries. Um, the spirit will want to freshen up after um, they've reached the altar. Um, so you're going to put like a hairbrush a mirror, some soap, um, a small towel. If you have the things that belonged to them, then you would lay those out. Um, so here you, you're going to put your question, your interesting fact that you've learned, and then any new vocab. Um, and we'll move on to 15. Um, you put items that you that belonged to the deceased, um, mementos, and other things that they, um, you know, the dead person enjoyed in life or laid out on the altar. Um, images of saints or role models who are important to the dead person's life. Um, and then something that we haven't really gotten a chance to talk about, papel picado, um, decorative images of cut paper, um, they're hung on a string and then i don't know if you ever as a kid made like coffee paper snowflakes but papel picado is something not unlike coffee paper or coffee filter snowflakes but these are really bright tissue paper um with cuts out and they're usually in like a certain like they're square with like certain images cut out um, like not like you fold and fold, but you actually like go in and cut them out all individually. Very pretty. And they're all on a string. Um, very nice to look at. Um, it says these decorative pieces of paper are cut, draped around the altar's edge or hung from above. Um, and then here is a quick note about the food and drinks on altars. The souls that visit their altars do not actually eat or drink what is on the altar. They can't, they don't have a body. Um, they absorb the aroma and the energy of the food, which nourishes their spirits. So they come up from Miklan, they absorb the energy, the spirit, the aroma, and then they go back. It nourishes, come up, 
nourishes them for their journey back. All right, so we have our Article 2 questions in green. And then we're going to look at Article 3 for Dia de los Muertos versus Halloween. Um, so it says, in the United States, there's a long history of celebrating uh, Halloween, the day that boys and girls um, walk from door to door to ask for candy and dress up as anything as they wish to be, either scary or magical creatures. Adults dress up, um, but in costumes that are quite different, most of the time being either scary, political, or provocative. Um, Halloween is definitely a great excuse to have a fun night. And as the main theme for the night is terror, um, mummies, skeletons, um, witches and ghosts and haunted houses, jack-o'-lanterns are placed upon doorsteps to ward away evil spirits and keep them out. Fun fact, if you didn't know that was the purpose of jack-o'-lanterns. Um, another celebration with a similar theme, but very, yet very different message to communicate is El Dia de los Muertos. Um, a celebration associated with the Mexican culture and celebrated in some states close to the United States border, such as Texas. Um, unlike Halloween is not meant to intentionally cause some of um, some sort of horror, either real or jokingly. Um, it is meant to honor those who have passed away and were cherished by those still alive. It is generally occurs um, that people would celebrate the day to honor their deceased family members. Um, Dia de los Muertos is not a dark celebration, as many might think. On the contrary, it is a happy celebration um, where death is accepted, but it but it is a remembrance that all is um, dead and was once alive. Okay. So we have our article three questions here. We have our Venn diagram. You'll name three similarities and three differences between, between Dia de los Muertos and Halloween. Okay. Um, when you finish, you will go ahead and submit. This is due today. And uh, that should take care of it. All right, guys. I love you and I will see you later. Bye.